Okay, thanks for having me back this year. Uh, today I'll be presenting my work towards automatic filterless generation for ad blocking. Last year, okay, last year I introduced a reinforcement learning framework called AutoFR um, to automate the process of filter rule generation. By design, it takes a site and then optimizes rules only for that site. Today I'm going to extend that work and outline approaches to generating rules that can be applied across multiple sites. First, let me provide an overview of the problem space and of auto FR. So filter rule generation is challenging due to this inherent trade-off between blocking ads and avoiding breakage. To illustrate this challenge, let's take a look at this trade-off plot. The y-axis shows how well we blocked ads, one meaning we blocked all ads. The x-axis shows how well we avoided breakage, one meaning there's no breakage. So a site normally behaves on this bottom right corner here when there are no filter rules applied. There are no ads blocked and there's no breakage. However, when we do apply a filter rule, of course it can block all ads, but it may cause some breakage. And it may block all ads with minimal breakage as well. So this top right corner here is an ideal region. In practice, filter rules can block some ads with minimal breakage. And so this right side um, of this plot here is an acceptable region. The second challenge is that there's high human effort in the creation and maintenance of filter rules. To understand this, we study the human workflow of a filterless author when they create URL-based filter rules. So we find there's high human effort in these particular areas in terms of where they, uh, the filterless author has to consider all the outgoing network requests to try and block and all the potential filter rules that may block those requests and of course the multiple manual visual inspection that they have to conduct to see whether the rules are effective or not at blocking ads or avoiding breakage. And so we take this human workflow and we mimic it using reinforcement learning. And this is AutoFR. This allows us to automate the process of filter rule generation. Uh, importantly, we replace that manual visual inspection with a reward. It's a number that can measure the effectiveness of a filter rule in terms of how well it blocked ads and how well it avoided breakage. To implement this framework as a practical tool, we focus on a real world bottleneck um, which is waiting for the, uh, the site to load its legitimate content and its ads. So to address the, oh, and when applying reinforcement learning, we actually have to visit the same site hundreds to thousands of times for the algorithm to converge. So this may take hours. To address this bottleneck, what we do is we use this concept of site snapshots instead. It's a graph representation of a site and how it's loaded. And so we're going to collect around 10 of them and then reuse them. So for example, when we apply filter rule to test it, instead of simply going to the site and waiting for it to load, we're going to randomly select a site snapshot that we have collected already and then apply the rule in a post-processing manner to calculate our reward. So this allows us to uh, implement AutoFR as an efficient and scalable tool that runs within a few minutes per site. Uh, due to time constraints, uh, please take a look at my last year's presentation and um, our paper. So what I've shown here is that AutoFR takes in a site and optimizes rules for that particular site. But what about filter rules that apply across multiple sites? To understand this problem, let me discuss the differences between per site and global rules using this plot here. Our y-axis shows the performance of rules on known sites. So that's the input to our system. We're going to optimize our rules for these particular sites. The y-axis shows the performance of rules on unseen sites. This happens when we apply rules that we did not optimize uh, for these particular sites. And when I say performance, I simply mean the percentage of sites within uh, the data set that we're trying um, when that falls within the acceptable region when applying the rules that we generate. So the rules, the per site rules that AutoFR generates on the top 5,000 sites is around here, around 0.8, which is pretty good. But we can see that it cannot be apl uh, applied on unseen sites. Now, of course, there are global rules which can be triggered for any site. However, we um, expect that it won't perform as well as per site rules because there's always this potential for collateral damage, meaning that a rule may be good for one site, but when you apply it to other sites, it may cause unintended breakage. So to explore this notion of collateral damage, what we can do is take all the per site rules that we've generated on the top 5,000 sites and then apply them naively as global rules. 
and uh, we'll apply them on the, our site snapshots data set and here's what we get. And we'll sum up all the breakage as well. So we can see that s rules that block multi-purpose uh, domains that can serve both legitimate content and ad related content has the highest potential for collateral damage. So what I'm showing here is that both per site rules and global rules have their strengths and weaknesses. So now let me outline uh, approaches to generating rules across sites and we're going to consider both per site and global rules. So the first approach is simply just use auto FR. We're going to act as if global rules do not exist and then so we don't have to deal with collateral damage. And this approach may be good for when we start doing personalized filter lists for users. However, of course, we're going to have to incur that cost when the user visits an unseen site. For example, the user will have to wait for us to run auto FR to generate new per site rules. The second approach we call auto FR global. We're going to modify auto FR so that we can take in multiple, multiple sites instead and then output global rules. A simple way to do this is to modify the reward function. For example, when we test a rule, we're going to apply it individually to the given sites and then average that reward and then use that average as the reward for the global rule. The next approach we call it auto FR popularity. We're going to rely on our auto FR to generate per site rules um, for our set of known sites and then aggregate them based on a popularity threshold. For example here, if the same per site rules was created by three different sites and we choose the popularity threshold of three, then it meets this criteria to become a global rule. So the intuition is that, well, if the same rule works well for multiple known sites, then it may work well for other unseen sites as well. And we know that this is true is that um, there are very popular sites um, as plotted here for the per site rules that we generated. And most of them are, for, for example, from uh, Google and Amazon, for et cetera. The next approach we called auto FAR similarity. Once again, we're going to generate per site rules for a set of known sites. So when a user visits a site and it matches with a site that's within this known set, then simply apply the rules that we already have. However, if the user visits an unknown site, then what we can do is find the most similar site to this unseen site using some kind of similarity metric like cosine similarity and then apply the, that, those rules to this unseen site. So our intuition here is that when we plot um, for example, sites and all the unique ESLDs that they contact, we find that there's prevalent third party uh, domains that um, are popular. And so the intuition here is that sites that contact the same um, ESLDs or domains will share the same way of serving ads and thus share the same effective filter rules. So next, let me describe the, our evaluation of these approaches and then I'll provide some recommendations. Uh, what, what we're going to do is um, take our data set of site snapshots and then split them into a training set. That's going to be our known set of sites, which we will optimize rules for. And then the test set will, be, will serve as our unseen sites. F we'll apply auto FR, which is our baseline. For auto FR global, we will evaluate two different reward functions, including the average of rewards as described before. For auto FR popularity, we evaluate popular thresholds from 1 through 10. For auto for similarity, we're going to evaluate cosine um, similarity for um, a vector of ESLDs. And then we're also going to look at whether we should use the rules from the, the uh, top one uh, similar site to top three, top five, et cetera. And so instead of going through this table, let me just simply plot the best results here. So we can see here that auto for similarity and auto for global performs the best for both known and unseen sites. However, if we want to apply this in the wild, and use this technique for real to generate filter rules and lists, we also have to consider the efficiency of these approaches, namely how long does it take to run these approaches, and the maintainability of the approach, namely when we want to update rules or we want to add an unseen site to our set of known sites, how long does it take? So here are the results. Auto FAR is the fastest because it takes a few minutes per site, and if we want to run it for an unseen site, then we simply just need to run Auto FAR for that individual site and leave everything um, as is. Auto for global we found to be quite slow. It may take hours and it linearly, linearly scales with it, our input. So that's uh, using empirical analysis here. And then it also have very, very bad maintainability because let's say if you want to add an unseen site to our, uh, to run auto for our global, we have to run the whole thing again. So that takes hours as well. 
For auto for similarity, it has a little bit of lower efficiency because for that initial unseen site, um, we, you have to visit that unseen site multiple times to build that vector of uh, ESLDs that it visits to calculate the similarity metric. So there's a delay here. So let me provide some recommendations. If we only care about known sites, use AutoFR. If we care both about performance on known and unseen sites, use AutoFR similarity and AutoFR global. If we care about efficiency and, and maintainability, use AutoFR and AutoFR popularity. There's also um, opportunities here to look at hybrid approaches. For example, since we know that AutoFR global performs well on both known and unseen sites, but it's low, well, just run it infrequently, for example, monthly. And then in the meantime, use AutoFR to generate per site rules. And then add this site, unseen site, to the list of known sites for the next run of AutoFR Global. I would also recommend thinking about the impl implementation as well. For example, since there's a delay with that um, for using AutoFR similarity, instead of visiting the site and collecting the ESLDs that, the con that they contact um, by, by ourselves, use external sources like um, Internet Archives that may already have it, that information so that we can quickly calculate the similarity metric. So in summary, I've demonstrated that AutoFAR is a tunable framework and can be used as a building block for filter rules and filter list generation. I've described four approaches to generating rules that can apply across sites and evaluated them in terms of performance, uh, efficiency, and maintainability, and also I've provided recommendations to the app blocking community. Our papers, code, and data sets are open source. Please check them out. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Good stuff. Um, questions? We'll take a few minutes. So right there. Hi. Uh, so I have uh, two questions. So the first one is, uh, how do you actually measure breakage? Uh, and the second uh, is, you have a very cool scale of for a uh, cool graph for measuring efficiency. And uh, it would be nice to be able to compare out to FR and out to FR similarity, et cetera, with uh, manually crafted filter lists. So what do you think, where will, where will easy list be on that scale of, of, of efficiency and uh, maintainability? That's a good question. So last year I described how we did, um, how we detected visual breakage. Namely what we do is we represent a site now as the counters of images, text, and counters of ads. So we, we get those numbers when there are no filter rules applied. Next, we'll apply a filter rule and see how those numbers change. So for example, if you apply filter rule and the number of ads goes down, but the number of images and text stays the same, then we know that there's no breakage. Um, and if it, but if you see the start, uh, you apply a rule and the number of images and text goes down, and you, uh, from the, what we expect the numbers to be, then we, uh, that causes breakage. Now in terms of the efficiency and stuff here, yeah, so we could try to do that. What we can do is maybe um, do um, some, user studies or whatever, get some metrics about how an average, in terms of average time a filter list author creates a f filter rule on the top 5,000 sites, for example, and then compare here. If, so then that would probably um, be good for easy list. If that's, if I understood your question correctly. Yep, pretty much. Okay. Cool. Hi. Uh, as I understand, uh, this whole uh, approach is rule based. Um, yes. Did you try to use some machine learning models for it, and uh, what was the scores if you had like some experiments with it? So um, this work is more focused on generating rules. I have n not tried to compare with other approaches for machine learning. the The difference here is that a lot of the prior work only detects whether you should block something, like a UL. Uh, you, whether you should block a URL or not, but it doesn't really know whether it will cause breakage or not. Um, so that's the difference here. But the framework is, is actually agnostic of the implementation, so we can actually integrate uh, mach machine learning models 
to detect ads to generate rules using AutoFAR. Hopefully that answers the question. Yeah. Cool. We'll do uh, one more and then save the rest for lunch. I think we got one way over here. Here, I'll do an assist for you, unless you want to try that. Hey, Hugh. Uh, hey. Thanks for the presentation. So I have two questions, one related to the AutoFR Global. Yep. So there might be some rules which break specific sites and which work on other sites well enough. So how do you modify the reward function to account for this? OK, so AutoFR takes in this, which I didn't talk about, a parameter from the user. So the user will define what is acceptable for them. So, so when um, AutoFR runs or AutoFR Global runs to figure out whether a rule is good or not, as long as that rule meets that threshold, as long as it stays within the acceptable region for the user, then it becomes a good rule. It would generate that rule. Okay. I, I hope that um, yeah. answers. Yeah. All right, so it all depends on what the user wants, right? Yeah. The yeah. Exactly. Threshold of breakage, and that's embedded in the reward function in the yes, exactly. Agent. Yep, exactly. Okay. And the second is related to autofa similarity. So you mentioned you calculate a similarity score uh, between websites that you have already generated rules for. So is this similarity based on the text or the images of the website, or how do you do that? It's based on a vector of the e of the like kind of the domains that the site visits. Okay. So f for example, if two sites visit the same domains, okay. then we say, oh, okay, we can probably use the same rules. So it's it's a vector which contains outward links from that site to other domains, right? Yeah, the outgoing, yeah, yeah, okay. be like Google.com, right. Facebook.com, whatever, whatever the hmm. the uh, domains that the site but visits. Doesn't this lead to a bit of false positives because? Uh, al almost all websites might link to Google Tag Managers or Google Ads, so that. Yeah, and I think, w well, what we found is that when it does ha that happen, then they do share, they, they do share rules, okay. right? Um, let me see if I can go back there quickly. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Uh, on popularity here, yeah, here. So we can see that a lot of um, when they do share these, you know, very popular domains that they what? will have the same rules as well. One more hand for you. Thank you.